Good morning. I want to ask you a question this morning like the Lord asked me. If it came over the news. Okay, let me put it this way for you in simplicity. If someone killed somebody. But it weren't you. Would you be offended? If someone said, oh, you know, there's some person who died up the street. Would you be offended? And why would you be offended if you haven't committed that act? We become offended when our, our conscience is seared like a hot urn. When our conscience is involved. The Bible says the word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to dividing asunder the bone and the marrow. The word of God brings out the hidden things that are in our heart and in our lives. You might be able to hide and fool your brother or sisters, but you can't fool God. You can't fool God who's all-knowing, who's all-seeing, who is always there, every place, at every time. We become offended because our conscience gets involved often which is a sign of guilt. So we respond because, you know, there's some animals when they hide in darkness, when you spot a torch on them, they, ah, ah, they panic. Why? Because light a man will shone on them or you shine the light on them. I want to talk a little bit about sorcery. In the book of Acts, chapter 16, let me read it first. Acts chapter 16, verse 16. And it came to pass as we went to pray, a certain damsel possessed with the spirit of divination met us, which brought her masters much gain by sued saying. The same followed Paul and us and cried, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God, which you want to us the way of salvation. And this she many days, and sorry, and this did she many days. But Paul, being grieved, turned and said to the Spirit, I command in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out of her the same hour. Listen to verse 19. And when her masters saw that the hope of their gains were gone, they caught Paul and Silas and drew them into the market unto the rulers. Verse 20. And brought them to the magistrate, saying, These men being Jews do exceedingly trouble our city. I want to talk a little bit about, a bit more about sorcery, because uh, this is something the Lord is really putting in my heart lately that's happening in the church. Sorcery. For some of you, um, if you follow ministries on social media or even in your in, even in your local churches, be very mindful with people um, telling you, "Oh, you should check out this pastor." Wow, I'm not saying that you shouldn't watch other messages. Come on, but be led by the Spirit of God. Oh, you should watch out this other pastor. Wow, ba 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 ba. I connected with them, and you follow them. Many of these people who are leading you to other ministries are bringing many pastors much gain. Like the false pastors. 
they are operating under the spirit of social. These people are bringing these pastors gain. These people are seducing you in the church who don't perhaps have enough discernment to, oh, come on, let's watch this together. Let's join here. But that person and these pastors have an agreement. Are you hearing me, somebody? You also have people in the church doing sorcery on money. They believe if they give in to your ministry or whatever, they will get on you, Joe. I mean, for example, that, I mean, favor comes from God and every person should be longing for the favor of God. But they believe they will get, you know, you the man of God, you will give them executive favor, executive privileges. That you will favor them above the others personally, not, you know, like us from God. You will favor them above the others This whole list goes on and on. So I'm going to stop right there. Be very mindful with sorcery in the church. There are sorcerers in the church. You heard what the Bible says? That this woman this woman was also a soothsayer. So many of the sorcerers in the church, you see, they have a form of godliness. Like they know the Bible very well. They know the word of God very well. Wow. And you're blown away by that. But if you don't have eyes to see or ears to hear a relationship with the Holy Spirit to really show you what is going on truly behind the scenes of such individuals. How can a man profess to know the word of God A to Z and still operating in sorcery, divination and witchcraft? Brothers and sisters. We are supposed to be gatekeepers in the house of the Lord. We are supposed to be manning the gates and looking out for the welfare of God's church. I see in today's society that people can care what happened in the church. Once I get, you know, what I came for, they can care. We are supposed to be faithful to Jesus Christ and be concerned about what is happening amongst his flock. Otherwise, we're not faithful shepherds. You know, you see the shepherd, all the sheep and the shepherd, anything comes against that flock, that shepherd will destroy that animal or that predator. Remember, David killed a lion and he did what? He killed a bear. Judas is carrot in the church. The spirit of Judas is also rampant in the church. And this is why your hearts need to be fully in tune and intertwined with the Lord Jesus Christ. You look to the Lord Jesus Christ for your provision. You look to the hand of God for your provision. You seek the Lord with all your heart, all your mind. Never, ever look to the hand of man. I've seen people. Well, this is what the Lord told me because I'm not all knowing. I only know what he shows me or tells me that they have been two so far I've seen two women who have been constantly trying to you know like how you put a fishing rod into the sea or bait on the fishing rod to catch the fish the Lord showed me two two women who have been using money to try to draw the soul of this ministry into the palm of their hands amen what am i saying you're supposed to give with a cheerful heart nothing should stop you giving you're supposed to give with the right motive give unto the lord you're supposed to be a joyful giver You know, sometimes there are times I've prayed and I've asked the Lord to stop certain people giving. And if I normally, if I ask the Lord to tell him, don't put money in that ministry, in the, in the ministry, no matter what they do, these people can't, they can't physically get the money so. Hmm? Hmm? Mm-mm, mm-mm. Amen. (coughs) 
So um, no matter what you do, these people can't get that money some because there are times when you need to ask God to remove certain hands and remove certain monies from your ministry. My brothers and sisters, please don't be deceived. If you love Jesus Christ, love Jesus with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. Amen. I get a holy anger for the rubbish that is going on in God's church. We have to care about what is happening among God's people. Amen. There's some things happening in the church that shouldn't be happening in the church. And there are individuals who are placed by Satan to try whatever they can. Individuals enchanting sorcery, using altars, um, believing they're sitting in throne and controlling people's churches and ministries and this kind of mad spirit uh, all kinds of stuff is happening to pastors churches around the world and i'm sure many prophets and men of god can relate exactly with um, this message they've been there they've seen it happen but it's time for you the church to rise up as the great harvest is coming in and for you to pray that God will begin to remove such people out of your midst. That God will begin to remove these wicked tears out of your midst. That God will begin to cut down and cast out these such people and individuals doing rubbish in his church. That are hindering those with little faith. That are obstructing or trying to obstruct the flow of his spirit moving amongst his people church you are called to pray you are called to have eyes to see and ears to hear constantly what the spirit of the lord is saying amen so the lord jesus christ bless you and i pray that you will stay away from sorcery you will have your eyes open for sorcerers and diviners masquerading as angels of light. The Bible says, Behold, Satan mask transforms himself, himself as an angel of light, appearing godly, appearing righteous, appearing spirit-filled. But they're not spirit-filled. They're not of Christ. They're not of his kingdom. Amen. So I pray you, um, brothers and sisters, God bless you indeed. Another thing too, the Lord is telling me to say before. No, actually, okay, so God bless you indeed. And um, remember, stay away from offense unforgiveness and all such things because it exposes the intent of our hearts god bless you i salute you shalom